All right, everybody. Hi, and welcome to our second edition of Shop Talk with me, Julie Bowen of A Talk With Ness Evolved. So today, hooray, the post lady brought me my relay with the instructions. There's the relay. It's uh, not a very exciting looking piece of equipment, but that's what made my kiln die. The instructions, which I posted on the blog entry. So the first thing that we need is we need a fourth inch nut driver. So I just got this from um, our ratchet set and basically I think that if you use any um, changeable screwdriver that if you see here that I think that that's the same as a fourth inch nut driver. So we're going to take out, well first of all, we're going to turn off the switch and I'm going to pull out the plug. So there's no electricity going to my kiln. Now I'm going to remove the screws and I've already removed quite a f I've actually already moved two of them. I'm going to remove these screws holding on the control panel to my kiln there and as long as they come off the body of the all right so now I've got the electronics supported there's the relay there are the wires going out of the relay and into the kiln so those wires there go into the heating coils there's the thermocoupler wire goes down and attaches to that electronic board Okay, so the first thing that we need to do is we need to take the nut at the top of the relay completely out. Now I know that this is the top nut here because if you look at the entire box, let's look at the entire box, this side, this side is up. So when we look at the relay here, this guy is our top nut. So now using pliers, we're going to carefully unattach this nut from the top of the relay. I couldn't get my quarter inch nut driver in there. So I think as long as you use uh, a firm grip on your pliers, it should come out fine with a, um, this is a needle nose pliers with a grip inside. So not your normal jewelry pliers but just a cheap pair of long nose, needle nose pliers from the hardware store. Okay, we're just gonna spin that guy out. I don't wanna get my fingers and hands in there because I don't wanna mess up the wires. So spin that out. hiding in there. Pull it out. Okay, so top knot of the relay. And then we're going to go over here and just loosen that guy. So, so now we need to loosen this bottom knot on the relay. What I want to point out is if we flip over the electronics, there are screws on the front side. So what we're going to do is we're going to put the Phillips head screwdriver in in that middle in the middle screw on the front so you can see here's one two three nuts and bolts so those are the three that we're seeing on the front so you need to put a Phillips head screwdriver in the nut head on the front side of the electronics control panel and then we're going to use our needle nose pliers then just to hold the nut still while we loosen the bolt on the front side. So here just to show you guys, so here I've got my Phillips head screwdriver in the middle of that screw, that nut, sorry, and now I'm going to use my pliers to get that guy out. Now I only have 
two hands, so I'm going to have to turn off the video while I do it. All right, so now you can kind of see, well maybe you can't, I've got my needle nose pliers in there holding the nut. Okay, and I'm just going to carefully remove the nut, having loosened it, so that the relay can slide up and off of that nut. The two nuts are off of the two bolts on the relay. So you can see one there and one there. What I want to show you guys is I have this supported on a piece of styrofoam which is on um, some pool filters which is on a jewelry stand um, just so that the control panel here is at a good height for me to work on so that I don't need to hold it or support it and it's keeping those now very carefully we can slide up the relay kind of move some of these other wires out of place okay so now oh we've got it and there's our relay now just like the instructions say it's really important to it's really important to only take out one thing at a time and put it into the new relay which is over here Doo -doo -doo. new relay we want to make sure it's oriented right so you can see here we've got two red plugs on the left and so here we've got two plug ports on the left, one on top and then one on the bottom right. And it does look like that is exactly what we're looking at. So we're going to pull these wires out one at a time and put them in the new relay. Again, the new relay here. It's important to remember that you need to pull it down here by the connector where it goes into the relay and never, never ever up here. Never pull it up here by the wire. So only pull it down here by the connector. We're now going to remove this black, black guy, this black connector. Again, grabbing the connector, grabbing the connector with our pliers, really carefully wiggling. Okay, and now it didn't change directions, so we know it's, and I'm really sorry you guys can't really see this very well. Okay, so same port, same port pin, holding the connector and making sure that that's firmly on. And now we're going to take this last one, and this is a big one. So you want to make sure you've got a firm grip on there and uh, that you're not going to pull pull any of the pieces off. Okay, so again, just gently, gently, gently rocking back and forth. Wiggle, wiggle. Okay. I have to switch switch hands here. Hopefully you guys can see a little bit. I'm going to wiggle this. Wiggle, wiggle, wiggle. All right. So, there. The old relay. Gone. Oops, we need to put... So you can see this bit came apart. That's not not a problem. Just reattach those. Again, make sure it's got a firm connection. And grab the connector. Slide the wires out of place, out of the way. I will say this one is a bit of a it's a bit of a tricky one because of the double because of the two plugs on one connector and I want to do this so that you guys can see what's going on 
But what I'm going to do is I'm actually just going to um, pushing down to make sure this guy's on all the way. All right, so new relay. Everything is back in place. And now we're just going to slide it down over those two bolts and then put the nuts back in place. So the wires, these wires, especially these, um, the red, orange, and yellow wires there, they're a little bit putty to get out of the way, I'm not going to lie. But just, you know, be careful and um, slide the new relay, there we go, all the way down and back over those screws. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the, um, the nuts. Now the instructions don't say if I need to start with one nut or another when I put it back on. Um, ideally not losing it in the kiln. Electronics is a good idea. Okay. But I'm going to do this one first just because it's a little bit easier to get at than this one. Then, no, then that one there that you can't. And now that I have that nut started so that it's staying on the bolt, I've just come under and now just with my finger I'm holding this, um, that bolt in place. So that I can tighten that nut a little bit more with my pliers and then when I finish tightening it, when I want to get it really tight, I'll put the Phillips head screwdriver in that bolt and then just use my needle nose pliers here to hold the nut so I can finish tightening it up. So now as advertised, I'm using the Phillips head screwdriver to um, turn that bolt bolt while I hold the nut on the other side to finish tightening up that first connection. And just remember, righty tighty. Um, so we're going to turn the Phillips head screwdriver to the right, which is, you know, this way toward us, <laughs> um, so that everything will tighten up. All right, ladies and gentlemen, so what I want to point out when getting into this second, getting the nut onto this second bolt, you really want to make sure that these wires are cleared up and out of the way. Because you're not going to have, you don't have a lot of room to maneuver the pliers to tighten it on. And so just making enough room to get the pliers in at all can be sort of a putsy frustrating challenge. So um, just a tip to really get those wires out of the way so you can get your pliers in there. Hold the nut steady while then you take your Phillips head screwdriver and then tighten the bolt on the front side of your control panel by turning right. All right, and I finally got the second guy in there. Um, and what I kind of want to say about getting the second one in is the reason I didn't show you guys is it's definitely not a one-handed job. And in fact, it's probably more like a three or four-handed job just because it's really hard to make sure that the nut is aligned with the bolt enough so that you can get the nut started so that it just so it can start screwing onto the bolt. Um, and I and I wouldn't suggest getting somebody somebody that you love to help you out. I mean, maybe find a neighbor who's borrowed a power tool for a couple of years who really deserves um, maybe some less than genteel language because it's a kind of a frustrating deal but it's done so there we go two bolts four plugs all tight no wires um, out of place anywhere else and in fact here I'm just going to check some of these just to make sure that these are all in you can't really see I'm just pushing to make sure um, Get these out of the way. Make sure that the thermocouple wire didn't come undone in your frustrations and ministrations. Um, all the wires are in tight. 
So now I'm going to do is I'm going to reattach it. So there are my four holes. I'm going to reattach my control panel and see if it works. So now I've realigned. I've realigned my control panel with the holes. I've got two of the, um, they're self-tapping screws actually. They're attached to the control panel but not attached to the kiln yet. And so now all I need to do is use my quarter inch nut driver. They're my craftsman, made in the USA, quarter inch nut driver to screw those two in first and then I'm going to grab my other two, my other two screws and then finish attaching those. I just want to show everybody that now as I'm finishing this fourth and last screw, there it is, not quite in yet, that I needed to have the kiln lid prop up just so that I could get in there to finish screwing on that last screw. Hi honey, that's my son Sawyer. Hi Sawyer. Hi. <laughs> Yeah, he wants to know when I'm going to be done. So hopefully we're going to be done super soon. All right, tight. I'm just going to plug in my kiln. Oh, my glass. Hi, glass. All right, plug her in. Okay. I'm going to turn it on. Oh, Sawyer's going to turn it on. All right, so Sawyer, turn on the switch. Okay, so Sawyer, turn on the switch. Okay, loud beeping, so it still works, thank God. I had a fault the last time it turned on and off. Surprise, surprise. Now, Sawyer, can you um, do the program start stop button, please? Should I turn it on? Yep, turn it on, please. And of course, we went through what my bead annealing cycle was the last time. Start on. Okay, let's check the button. can't see it very much but ladies and gentlemen we have let's look oh it's hard to tell oh there it is it's turning on ha <laughs> yay so ladies and gentlemen that that is how you fix a kiln relay problem thank you all so much for watching bye